this subtype of uh, Omicron variant is, is in circulation, but uh, uh, this is uh, uh, China where we see a lot of cases uh, that we see and uh, not much of you know public information is available from China. But what we see from international media, there is no serious threat in India. Uh, it was identified in India a few months ago, but uh, we haven't seen any major uh, pattern in Indian context. Next time. Next slide, please. So it is not as dangerous as I said. Uh, none of the COVID uh, Omicron variants are as dangerous as the Delta variant was. So largely, uh, it's a general flu-like illnesses or what we call technically influenza-like illnesses that we see, that we continue to have. Uh, but uh, since August, uh, I would say September onwards, I have not seen any, uh, you know, really uh, uh, number, good number of COVID patients. Mm -hmm. So uh, September, October onwards, there was a rapid decline in numbers. And we do have a, a surge of influenza-like viruses, influenza-induced uh, flu. And there's a different pattern though, high-grade fever, body pain, headache, and severe coughing. Many times it starts as dry cough and later on becomes its uh, purulent uh, uh, productive cough. And cough pers is persisting very forceful for you know, more than five to 10 days many times. So uh, we have to treat mostly these cases uh, symptomatically cough is uh, you know difficult type but mostly uh, fever subsides by fifth day the first three days you get high grade fever then fourth fifth day the fever subsides and most of these patients start fever with chills and with other associated uh, you know, symptoms like you know sore throat headache uh, body pain muscle pain chest pain all the symptoms we are seeing but these are not covid patients i did try to send few of the patients if they had travel history or not, but uh, none of them have turned uh, COVID positive so far. So next slide, please. Yes, uh, we do have this BF7 uh, variant in India, and but it is not of what we see in China and other countries. Next slide, please. Symptoms are almost similar to other variants, and you know, fever, cough, cold, sore throat, running nose, fatigue, and vomiting, very few patients may present with diarrhea also. But take history of diarrhea or pain abdomen, gastroenteritis or gastritis. Whenever such symptoms are present, always make sure that you know such patients have not exposure of any outside. Many times, you know, especially in the urban settlements and areas, people have uh, tendency to consume outside food and. Uh, uh, often this is associated gastroenteritis rather than a symptom of uh, COVID in itself or symptom of influenza in itself. So treat with appropriate antibiotics and uh, antimicrobials whenever you see uh, a patient with upper respiratory tract infection with gastroenteritis or gastritis. Next slide, please. So precautions are same uh, for COVID variants, all type physical distance, mask, uh, booster dose, because when we had earlier uh, uh, waves of Omicron or uh, COVID, we did not have uh, vaccine protection, but majority of the patient, one is they have been exposed naturally to the virus uh, through primary infection. And uh, second, uh, most of the people have received, especially the high-risk people have received, the working people have received the second dose also so i have seen i've also tested many patients for antibody titers and uh, titer is uh, really good for most of the people that even if they do not go for the uh, uh, the third uh, dose or an extra dose or booster dose uh, they are protected enough and naturally it is also circulating so people are getting natural exposure to it also uh, but uh, this fundamentally avoid going to crowded places uh, be, and maintain cleanliness and use of sanitizer, especially for uh, healthcare professionals, is important. 
many times we ourselves are negligent not uh, very diligent in our uh, you know sanitizing practices hand wash uh, you know, do not touch face use of masks these are the things that we should be as healthcare professionals be practicing first and then also and try to influence our patients behavior also because largely public places a lot of gathering everything is open businesses market malls schools uh, but this has not impacted covid surge so we will have to wait and watch but largely what it appears from the data available in public domain in the ministries and also it you know kind of uh, uh, reflects in our practice also these data are all correct so i can vouch from our own practice also that there is no misalignment in the data because what we see in data is also reflecting for past two months i have not seen any covid positive patient in my very many times every day i used to see 10 20 patients in a day during august time for example next slide please so these are the two if you look at the who website uh bq1 and xxb uh, they are also being now uh, uh, mentioned in popular media common media tv television social media news blogs and all and these are the two uh, omicron sub lineages uh, bq1 and xxb and as of uh, there was a meeting last meeting of the who's technical advisory group on sars cov virus evolution tag ve Uh, in october and these are the two variants which are being monitored but largely from the clinical practice perspective there is not much of difference and uh, uh, these are being watched because of the public health and uh, epidemiological reason rather than of clinical reason so far so there are not much of any uh, you know threat as such as of now next slide please so thank you very much